Hi, I'm Bob Pardo. I'm here in cooperation with AFRC's senior leaders to encourage every airman to participate in this year's Air Force Reserve Command's Wingman Initiative. This year's themes are twofold. The first is resiliency and the four pillars of comprehensive fitness. Physical, psychological, spiritual, and social. The second is what it means to be a good wingman. So what does it mean to be a good wingman? The concept and practice actually comes from the flying world, where pilots fly in formation. The first responsibility of every airman is to use your training to avoid trouble whenever possible. If you do get into trouble, you can know that your wingman will try to help or find help. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Many of you are familiar with a certain bombing mission over Vietnam on March 10, 1967. On that day, Steve Wayne and I were called to be wingmen. Our team of four pilots was flying two F-4 Phantoms. The other plane was piloted by Earl Amon and Bob Hogan. Earl and Bob got hit by enemy fire on the way to the target but decided to complete the mission, so we stuck together. Given their assessed damage at the time, it was the right decision. By the time we completed the mission, though, both planes were badly damaged, theirs much worse than ours. It was very clear that our wingmen were in trouble and would have to eject over hostile territory. Given our location and knowing the probable implications of that choice, I decided not to let that happen. So using their lowered tail hook, we devised a way to push them as far as we could toward Laos before we all had to bail out. Since we were still in enemy territory, we had to use our training to evade enemy forces until our search and rescue guys picked us up. It had been one hell of a journey, but we all returned safely and, more importantly, alive. It was not the first time this maneuver had been tried, and over time it became known as the Pardo Push. You can learn more about that day on the AFRC Wingman Toolkit website. I was asked by AFRC leaders to recall this experience, not because some people thought of us as heroes, but because we all had the opportunity that day to exhibit the behaviors of a good wingman. Behaviors like teamwork, initiative, not giving up no matter what the odds, and finding any way you can to help others or yourself get to safer and healthier places. It's important to note that you don't have to be a flyer to be a good wingman. You need integrity. I believe every airman is capable of teamwork, initiative, not giving up, and finding a path to safer and healthier places. You also don't need to wait for a crisis to act. As I said earlier, the first responsibility of a wingman is to train to avoid trouble whenever possible. Had we not had good training, good equipment, and the willingness to work together, things might have been very different that day in 1967. This year, within the context of the four pillars of comprehensive fitness, we'd like you all to think about what it means to be a good wingman. An airman who is physically, psychologically, spiritually, and socially fit is much less likely to get into trouble and is also more able to help others get out of trouble. I retired from the Air Force many years ago, but I've never stopped being the best wingman I know how to be. Sometimes I've helped others, and sometimes they've helped me. This year, I encourage you all to set achievable goals and then make the time to improve or maintain your physical, psychological, spiritual, and social fitness. You'll be a better airman, and when called upon, a more capable wingman. Thank you for your service to our great nation and to the Air Force Reserve Command. Be well, and never leave your wingman.